In this episode, you'll hear a clip from a one-on-one strategy session with one of my FAST students, Rachel Kranick. Rachel's a freelance fashion designer specializing in active and outerwear. She works full-time in the industry and she freelances on the side. Rachel's reaching the point where she wants to quit her full-time job, but she isn't sure if she's ready. She feels at a comfortable capacity with her clients, given the commitment she still has to her employer, but she doesn't feel like it's enough of a base to leave her job. Despite having a year's worth of money saved, which is amazing, Rachel, congratulations, she still feels really uncomfortable quitting. She also feels really loyal to her employer, even though, spoiler alert, they have not been as loyal to her. So I shared the litmus test that I think all freelancers should use to determine when it's a good time to quit, as well as some different scenarios she can consider. At the end of the day, quitting your job is a very personal and arguably very scary decision. If you've ever been stuck here or are wondering how to take the leap to being a full-time freelance fashion designer, you're going to love this strategy session. Let's get to it. Also, quick disclaimer, I had a little technical difficulty and my audio was recorded through this headphone mic, not my nice mic. So you might notice a difference in the quality, but it's still worth listening. And you said you started doing client outreach, but then you pulled back because honestly, I'm scared that I'll secure a client and then I'll have the capacity to give them the time and energy they need while juggling everything else. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. So yeah, I have thoughts. Do you want to say 100%? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's where I'm at. I've been freelancing for about two years now and like, I've loved the idea of freelancing for a long time um, and just having that freedom and flexibility. But I think like that stability of having the job versus like, like having to hustle like excites me and scares me and so yeah I'm kind of just like in frozen in this limbo where I'm like okay where do I go and also the opportunities in my current job are just so good it's like okay is that what I want is the timing right you know so I'm kind of just like I'm stuck (laughs) I mean I think a lot of this is like a really really personal decision listen I I will happily walk through like all my thoughts but at the end of the day like this is not necessarily like strategy. This is more like, where do you sit as a human being in this situation? Um, a couple of things you said that, so I'll just, I'll just talk about a couple of things I found interesting. You said, I love my job and the people I work with, and I have a loyalty issue because they depend on me so much. But then like a sentence later, you're like, but they make me feel guilty about taking vacation. I know. (laughs) So like a, a little bit of me is like, okay, you have, it almost sounds like you have more loyalty to them than they arguably might have to you. Perhaps. I don't want to read too much into this. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and listen, loyalty is a great thing. Like I, that's a very like quality characteristic in my book. Um, so you know, you, you say you're at capacity with your freelance clients right now. Um, I could I, probably take on like a few more. It's just, I'm kind of like, it's like, what can I do in the evenings and weekends? And then also trying to have like a little bit of a social life because I'm yeah, not totally. entirely willing to give that up. So yeah. I think it's just, it's like, yes, I could give up my life and like do enough freelance to financially support myself to feel comfortable. You know what I mean? But I'm yeah. just like, that's not something I'm willing to do. So it's something's got to give. Right. Okay. Okay. That's great. So then you kind of need to think about like, what is going to work best for you. So you don't want to take on so many clients that you literally are like working all the time, mm-hmm. but then you're also scared to like, take the risk of leaving your job and going into freelance full time. So like one of those things has to budge a little bit. So maybe it's like saying, I'm going to give it three months um, of like hustling my ass off to like work my day job and work freelance at like a solid capacity. And I'm going to sacrifice some of like, right, social mm-hmm. things or whatever it might be, right? I mean, you have to, I threw out three months as a number. I don't know what that is. Like you have to assess, like, I don't want you to like, obviously get to the point of burnout or something. I mean, some people can like really go hard for a while. Some people like break pretty quickly. So it's a little bit of like your character, but perhaps doing something like that to get you to the point of like, okay, and I I know you have a year up saved, which is amazing. Um, you could probably save even more, right? With that extra freelancing mm-hmm. income, you can start building up your client base even more. 
And then until you reach like that tipping point that you're like, okay, I'm tapped out. It's time for me to like lean full into the freelance, at which point you'll likely feel more confident because you have a more solid base and you've been able to sort of like prove to yourself. This is one of the litmus test I like to use for are you ready to go full time is you can strategically go out and get clients. It's not like, oh, I have two clients. They luckily fell into my lap. Listen, you mm -hmm. can build your career that way. People do. Um, but I kind of like to look at it as like, I know the strategies to get new clients. I can effectively do that to take clients I have take existing clients I have, get more projects from them, um, you know, get referrals from them, right? Like I know how to pull these levers and nothing, at the end of the day, nothing is guaranteed, right? I mean, even your full-time job is not guaranteed, sure. but you have to like, at some point, take a little leap of like, okay, I feel confident that I've got the skills and the strategies to do this very, um, I mean, I guess just, just, just uh, strategically rather than like, oh, I luckily got this, these two clients, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's helpful because I think yeah. I'm kind of probably right in between there. A lot of them, <clears throat> a lot of my current clients have been like luck or like I've pursued some of them, but yeah. I think it could build definitely more confidence and experience um, actually like pursuing. But that's like I said, like I kind of pulled back. As soon as I started, I pulled back because I was like, yeah. oh, if I, if I reel in more clients, like then... <laughs> I have to have the time to work with them, but yeah. you know, it's kind of also like if I reel in the right client who can give me like, you know, a good, like bigger project, that's going to be like, you know, three months or yeah. like be consistent or something yeah. and at least be like, you know, a good amount of hours every week, then I would feel comfortable. Right. So it's yeah. like, if it's the right client, that could be a game changer for me. But if it's just it's like, like, I'm, I feel like usually what I'm getting is like, you know, these little projects here and there, which are great. I love yeah. those little projects, but they're, yeah they're not enough and those little projects build up. And then it's like, I have all these little projects that I don't have capacity for, but none of them are sustainable or, you know, reoccurring enough to be like substantial for me to feel like I can quit. But maybe two things. One is that you're not going after the projects that could be sustainable long-term because you have the full-time job. And two, might there be, and there might not, but might there be opportunity for you to the projects that you're you're doing that you say that are kind of like shorter, maybe feel like more one off. Um, you know, is there opportunity to take those into something bigger, right? Like I always say to people, whenever you're working with a client and you finish the project, right? That like mm -hmm. box that you agreed to complete or whatever, um, always think about the next thing coming in line. So I don't know what your skills and services are. I mean, you're in a management role. I feel like you've got some experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in the industry for about 10 years. So okay. So I've done some all, stuff. Yeah, right. So it's like, okay, you do design and I don't know what you want to do. So, right, there's a balance between that too, right? Like some people are like, I'm going to design, design tech hacks. I do not want to do PD. I do not want to do development. I do not want to do sourcing, right? But perhaps you could, like, you do the design tech packs and that project's done. Then you're like, okay, well, logically, what comes next? Mm -hmm. And hey, let me help you sources with the factories or manage the production or like what have you, right? So you can be a lot more proactive to keep like getting the next step in the project because from their perspective, they just worked with you. They like you, they trust you, the project went well. Like, of course, it's a no brainer to keep working with you versus going out and try to find somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I know yeah, not all I've, projects are like that, but that's an option for sure. True. Yeah, I've been pretty transparent with my clients that like, sourcing is not kind of where I specialize or anything okay. like that and I feel like that's kind of where they get held up and so uh, um yeah so we're kind of like <clears throat> it's like I put that option out there I'm like oh if you guys want me to you know help you with the sourcing and the product development process I can totally do that just like you know I'm a phone call away reach out yeah. um but it's like my resources are pretty limited as far as domestic production goes right like I've worked with overseas vendors but a lot of my clients are trying to do domestic and I'm like I can't help you so I'm pretty transparent about that with them but yeah I do think that like as they you know go along they'll reach out to me and there's some consulting and stuff and I think in the future like some of my clients are you know going to keep having different ideas and different projects so I do think there's potential for ongoing and I think yeah. the more that I build out those 
smaller clients, it will turn into something. So I'm trying to just be patient and like, let it grow organically. I just have some days where I get really impatient. I'm like, yeah. why isn't this like going now? Okay. So. Right. So that's an interesting like balance, right? So you, you're letting it grow organically, which it's going to grow at a certain pace, right? Mm -hmm. If you are more proactive, I feel based on where you're at already, I, you could like really, you know, amplify that, speed that up quite a bit. So you're in this like, you know, rock in a hard place, but you don't want to speed it up because your job. Yeah. So I go back and forth. Some days I'm like, uh, I'm over my job. Like I just <laughs> want to freelance and then I'll get really motivated and then I'll start like doing client outreach and like, you know, talking to people or looking yeah. at stuff on Upwork. Yeah. And then other days I'm like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I got to dial it back. Like this is too much. Yeah. So it kind of just goes back and forth. I mean, I feel like you could be sort of stuck in your current position for a long time. It sounds like you've been there for about two years. Yeah. So unless you lean into some sort of like discomfort and like leap, right? Nothing's probably going to change. And, and I would argue that the discomfort of leaning into that decision, whatever that may be, um, will be a will feel like a bigger emotional like toll but it will be more shorter lived versus like this up and down that you're in it's like ah, manageable but it's like constant of like oh I love my job and I feel loyal to them and oh let me do the client outreach but wait I'm getting overwhelmed right and you're kind of like oh right versus if you're like okay mm -hmm. let me make the scary decision to like commit to something. And if that's your full-time job too, like that's also fine, right? There's no right or wrong answer here, but like giving yourself the permission to lean into one of these things more fully and, and knowing what's going to come like, okay, I'm going to lean into my full-time job because I just got this management or leadership role and I'm loving it. And I, I feel like maybe I'm growing even more and whatever. Right. Great. Um, then give yourself like the release of like, okay, it's okay. I don't have to do client outreach. And maybe I am going to do this for like six more months or something or another year, like whatever the commitment is fine. Or you're like, I do really want this freelancing lifestyle. My job, I'm loyal to them and I will continue to be loyal to them. And I'm not going to half ass it. I also have to be mindful that like, Maybe they're not as low as me. I don't know. That vacation thing really got me. That was me personally. Yeah. Um, no, they're they're great, <laughs> but then they're not. Like it's yeah. like they're great people, but then culturally the company just like it's really old school. They don't believe in vacation or any kind of like working remote or working flexible hours. It's yeah. like you need to be in the office all day, every day. And like yeah. they're just they're just setting their ways and like where are you at you today? Know, it's a Tuesday at nine o'clock or eight o'clock. Oh. You're not even going yet. <laughs> I have an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. okay. So you're at home. Um, and, and listen, if you lean into like sticking with them for a longer amount of time, I'm not here to judge you by any means. Right. Cause there's a lot of great things about a job and et cetera, et cetera. So, so just on the other side of the table, you know, you're thinking like, okay, I want this freedom and flexibility that comes with freelancing. I, despite having a year worth of money saved, which I think is amazing. Congratulations on that. That's a huge feat, Thank especially you. in Southern California. Massive feat. Thank you. Um, you're my kind of people. <laughs> um, <laughs> you still, sorry, let me wind. Okay, so leaning into the freelancing thing, you want the freedom and the flexibility. What is that actually going to look like? I mean, you have options, right? Okay. Quit knowing I've got the year of money and I'm going to just hustle my ass off. And I'm going to figure this out or lean into like a set amount of time, three months or whatever that feels good for you of like, okay, I'm going to give up happy hour and we get to the beach or like whatever. And I'm going to sacrifice these three months for maybe a little bit more like internal comfort when I take that leap to go freelancing full-time. So I think those are like some of the options you have to look at. And again, it really just matters like 
what feels workable for you. If you liked this video, you're going to love this one. Hit play now and thanks for watching.